I think strategically they're looking for someone that can actually articulate a message and a vision um, that resonates with them, that has solutions for fixing our debt, for growing our economy. In the minds of many potential voters across the country, the party affiliation makes no difference. Both sides have failed to deliver on their various promises of jobs and future security. So why would anyone trust either side? Trouble is when it comes to elections, you have to trust someone. And the group known as Millennials is wondering who they can trust and why they should trust them in the first place. Welcome back to Midpoint, Chairman of Patriarch Equity and Digital Marketing.com, Market Analyst. You've read him in Forbes and Business Week. Eric Schiffer joins us. Eric, thanks so much for being here. Hey, good to see you again, Ed. All right, Thank Eric, you. let's get right to Proud this when it comes down to the millennials here. I saw an article and it caught my attention right away. Has six years of President Obama turned millennials into a bunch of tea partiers? What do you think? Uh, you know, it's interesting. That was a New York Times article, mm -hmm. by the way. And, you know, I think that uh, what we're seeing, and certainly w with the followers that I have and a significant numbers of millennials, uh, you know, not only are they turned off by, I think, the, there's a distrust in government. And I think that's only increased with some of the things that are happening on the border, some of the things that are happening uh, and have happened with the NSA. And also the fact that while we're in an economic recovery of sorts, it doesn't and it hasn't translated to real jobs. So you've got millennials that fit into this group between, you know, roughly from a working perspective, 18 to 30 year olds that are seeing the economy, uh, you know, doing OK in terms of the headlines, but they're not seeing it translate. And so uh, typically what you find and certainly from FDR all the way to JFK, this younger generation has always typically voted Democrat. We're seeing, especially from that New York Times article, there's a, there's a shift that's happening. And it's slight, but there's a shift. And the shift is towards the conservative side. Uh, and typically, that, those shifts generally come from a major event. And the, the distrust in government is one of those factors. Is there enough of a shift there, though, Eric, if you think about it? Because you mentioned it's small, and the Republicans need to chip away whatever they can at this point. But is it really going to be enough to make a difference in the midterms? Well, you're seeing numbers that are not insignificant. In fact, what you're seeing is uh, almost an increase of 10 percent of people that uh, had voted before uh, on, the, on the Democratic side that are not going to vote Democrat. And you're seeing an increase of almost 68 percent on the Republican side. So, you know, in some of these elections in which uh, the, the difference can be, you know, uh, less than 10,000 votes, it absolutely can make a difference. And that's, you know, that's why millennials can actually really have an impact in this election. All right, now here comes something I want you to listen to as well. This comes from GVH Live. It is a web-based media platform that targets millennials. They interviewed the founder and editor of Millennial Elephants, Kellen Curry, on which party is likely to get the millennial vote. Here we go. Tea Party candidates that are going to get a boost of momentum from what Dave Bratt's been able to do. And I think they're going to seize, once again, on, on what, what looks like a winning message of economic populism uh, for young voters uh, who are looking for, for uh, a different kind, of, different kind of politics. Here we go right back to that Tea Party thing again. Now, you would think, at least just looking at the Tea Party and how the media paints the Tea Party in many instances, that there is no way that it would absolutely appeal at all to that 18 to 30 range. Is it not that they're really doing a great job getting the message out, but the president right now is doing such a terrible job getting the message out that it's poisoning the well for Democrats? I think that, that millennials can uh, you know, choose uh, very wisely. I mean, this is the most sophisticated generation in terms of uh, awareness and uh, discernment of the media of any generation in the history of mankind. They grew up with this. They grew, they grew up watching TV. They grew up on computers. And so uh, they get their news very differently. In fact, many of them don't even watch TV. They get their news online, which is you know via Newsmax, via Fox News, via other outlets that typically may not, may not be so ubiquitous in a, in a traditional broadcasting sense. They make their own choices. They, they really sort for truth, and they can sniff out what's fake. And I think one of the things that we're beginning to see is this, you know, uh, not much of a difference in some of the uh, pieces of information that are being passed by the Tea Party that are, that are factual. I mean, they may not come through the best prism of, 
of uh, you know, display and, and perhaps the most politically palatable way in which they've been painted, but they're fact-based. And so millennials look at facts, they make decisions based on facts, and one can't deny what's going on in this economy. They can't deny the debt. They can't deny the fact that we are borrowing uh, from, from countries like China uh, you know, trillions of dollars. These things need to end. And you know, the next generation of, of Americans, the leadership, millennials are going to inherit all this stuff and many have had enough. Many want to see an economic recovery that really translates into jobs. Many of us, many of them want to see a country that's not, you know, saddled in debt and many of them want to see something done about the border with this, you know, tremendous influx of people where there's no protection of the border. I mean, you could, you could have ISIS members coming across, uh, you know, through Mexico. That's craziness. Eric, do they really get it though? And, and I ask that question because many times when I talk to people who are in their late teens and their 20s and even their early 30s, they don't seem to have a grasp of the news many times. They seem to be taking it at a glossing factor. What's been said in the headlines? What is the one liner they read on Twitter? The one liner they read on Facebook instead of digging in and finding out some of the real facts that are involved here. Isn't that the single biggest issue? They're sophisticated, but do they dig deep enough to find out what the facts are and to get past all the hype and the, and, and the flash? The data is showing that they do at a larger degree. Now, obviously, there are many that don't. And so you can find a lot of anecdotal situations in which that's not the case. But the, but the data that we're seeing is a trend towards uh, finding that information and also using it uh, and also acting on it uh, and, and changing of, of belief systems toward the conservative side. Look, there was a, there was a French po proverb that said, you know, uh, in essence, uh, you know, in your 20s, it's all about uh, want of heart, and in your 30s, it's all about want of head. Uh, you know, when you, when you begin to have to make a living and when you begin to have to pay the bills, uh, whether you want to really spend 50% of your, you know, your, just your dollars that you're earning to taxes uh, and, and send it to different programs that may not make the most sense in the most efficient way, it begins to make you think about how you want to live your life and what are the beliefs that are really important to you and for your family. You look at the Democrats and the Obama campaign, first time they were elected, second time, they did a masterful job of using social media to their advantage and they really pulled in a tremendous vote from the youth in that way. Is it fair to say now that the president may have backed himself into such a corner as far as the millennials are concerned, made so many mistakes, that it doesn't make what difference or what they do in social media this time. They're a little savvier this time. And on top of that, maybe the Republicans, if they were a little savvier in social media, imagine what that swing might bring. Um, I don't think that social media uh, can hide the facts. What social media is good at is getting out the facts. And if you remember when Obama was doing these messages, I mean, there was, there were, this was through a Bush administration in which people had enough about the Iraq war. They felt that hundreds of billions of dollars were being spent in Iraq when we shouldn't have been there. People were dying. And many of them, look, look at the facts. I mean, the facts are we spent a trillion dollars, we've left Iraq, and we've lost Iraq in essence. So, you know, I think that uh, now we're at, we're at a completely different set of facts. I mean, we're a set of facts in which, um, you know, there's, there's somewhat just a level of distrust in government. We have an immigration problem that no matter what side you're on, you can't deny the fact that you've got tremendous amounts of people that are crossing the border in which we don't have control over the border. Uh, and we still have a debt that's significant. We still have a, a budget deficit. We're still borrowing trillions of, of uh, you know, dollars. Uh, and we're printing money. Uh, you know, I mean, the Fed is printing money still. They've slowed down, uh, but they're still printing. So I think um, there's, a, there's no question that Social media is a, a vehicle to get the message out, but if your underlying facts are not necessarily strong for the electorate, it really doesn't matter. I've got about 40, 45 seconds left. Do you think millennials understand the fact that even if they change things in 2014 and 2016, they're still going to be the ones who are going to bear the brunt of this because it's going to take a long time to fix this financial mess? I think they know it well. I think that they are grittier than uh, we, we may give them credit uh, in terms of having in the media, uh, but I think they're also an optimistic group and they're reality based. And so I think that uh, I'm optimistic, you know, about the generation, despite the fact that there aren't, you know, necessary strong markers yet. Uh, the data is looking good, and I also believe 
I believe in the country. I believe that, that we will find more and more leaders that are going to rise up, not just on the millennial side, but the Gen X side, uh, that will take the mantle of you know, the, the, the future decades for this country. I don't believe that America's best days are behind us. I believe they're in front of us. Outstanding. I like that to launch us into the weekend. Eric, it is always a pleasure to see you again, my friend. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll talk again soon. You too, Ed. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Take my care. My pleasure. All right. A couple of numbers here, too, just before we get out of here. 66% uh, of the millennials surveyed said government is wasteful and efficient, and 59% say cutting taxes would help the economy. It is the millennials who are going to take us into that next generation. Coming up next, the latest from the Newsmax Now desk and a peek back at our sister shows and what they have been bringing to the table. Interviews that you may have missed, but trust us, these are the things we bring you to make sure that you don't miss it the second time around. Right here on Midpoint, where every day we question everything.